All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk to you about the rank of a matrix because you're used to the rank being as the dimension of the column space, but that's not quite the definition of the rank. The true definition is as follows. So given a linear transformation, T from V to W, well, then that linear transformation has a range. It takes all of V and maps it to a potentially smaller space, which is the range of T. In other words, the range of T is the set of all possible values of T. And then the rank of a linear transformation is just the dimension of that range. So if that linear transformation takes your whole space and squeezes it on a line, then the rank of this would be one. It would take your space and make it one dimensional. And if it takes it to a plane, it's two dimensional, etc., etc. And you're like, what does it have to do with matrices? Well, it turns out given a matrix, you can define a particularly nice linear transformation called LA, simply defined as follows LA of x equals a times x. And that's called left multiplication by a, not like Los Angeles International Airport, which I really don't like. But, uh, and by the way, you, you might be used to saying, oh, a matrix is one-to-one. -one. That technically doesn't make sense. What you really mean is LA is one-to-one. -one. And using LA, we can define the rank of A as simply being the dimension of the range of LA. So in other words, what it is, is simply the rank of the linear transformation LA. Because we know what the rank of a linear transformation is. It measures how big the output of a linear transformation is. Here the rank of a matrix is how big you can multiply matrices by in some sense. That is one thing. And again, you might be like, why am I saying this? Because that's a true definition of the rank. But now, let me show indeed that the rank of A is the same as the dimension of the column space of A. So, let's show that. And, oh, the funny thing, I almost had the wrong lecture notes. But, oh, there they are, sorry. I was like, why am I reading gibberish? No, no, no. But, <laughs> I did have part of it in my mind. So now, let me, first of all, let me remind you what the column space is. So definition, the column space of A is just a span of columns of A. For example, the column space of one, one, one minus one, that's the span of one, one, one minus one, and basically everything in R2, you can write this as a span, so the span is precisely R2. And now, let me show you that the rank of A is the same as the dimension of the column space of A. So after that, we can just use any definition of rank we want. So rank of A is dimension of the column space of A. And why is that? So. Again, the true definition of the rank, it's the dimension of the range of LA. But remember, to find the range of a linear transformation, you just need to find it on basis vectors. And in particular, let's choose a very nice basis, the standard basis of Fn. So let beta, which is E1 up to En, be the standard basis of Fn. And there's a reason we choose the standard basis. It, it's particularly nice and makes the proof work. But in case you're confused by the symbols, just think E1 to be 1, 0, 0, E2 to be 0, 1, 0, etc., etc. Now, since beta is a basis, what I've just
just said is that uh, to find the range of a linear transformation, you just need to figure out what the linear transformation does on basis vectors. So the range of LA is the span of LA of E1 dot 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 LA of EN. So you don't need to find LAX for every X, just find LA on those basis vectors. And then by definition of LA, that is A of E1 dot 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 A of EN. But the reason we chose the standard basis vectors is that those things become very easy. For example, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, if you apply A to the vector E1, what you get is 1 and 1, which is precisely the first column of A. And in particular, what is the span? It's the span of the first column of A. Column 1 of A. Column 2 of A. And column N of A. So this is precisely the span of the columns of A. Which is precisely the column space of A. So you see, the column, the range of LA is the column space of A, in particular, the dimension of the range of LA, which is the rank of A, is equal to the dimension of the column space of A. And from now on, you can just use the fact that the rank is the dimension of the column space of A. And that's why um, all the stuff you learned about row reduction works. You just row reduce a matrix, the rank is preserved, and you, because the rank is preserved, you can just find the column space of the easier matrix. And then that's how it helps you to find the rank, and I have a bunch of videos on that as well. All right, I hope you like this little linear algebra cookie. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.